Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for January 12th, 2021. It's a brand new year, so I've been teaching about new levels. And I, I, I've told you that I believe heaven is saying that it is a season of new levels for us. And because there are new levels, we have to now discern what does that mean for, for me? Like, what does that mean for you? And at the beginning of the year, this is uh, an opportunity to do some introspection, to spend some time inspecting yourself, not worrying about other people, inspecting yourself. Many churches are doing a fast right now. My church is in the middle of a fast. And while we're fasting, we are praying. We're considering ourselves, our own lives, what God is saying, where we're going, all of those things. And so this is a time of introspection. And during this time of introspection, I told you that there are five areas of our lives that we should consider as we prepare for 2021. We want to ask ourselves kind of where we are spiritually, where we are uh, financially, like what are we doing as it relates to what the Bible says about money? Physically, are we taking care of our of the temple that God has given us to house the Holy Spirit? Internally, all the things that go on on the inside, psychologically, mentally, and then externally, do we have the right relationships, social connections, all of that? All of that, those five areas I'm going to cover. And so within number one, and so within the first one, I said that we were going to have a recommitment or to level up in the area of the word, getting into the word of God. Number two, hearing from God, making sure that we hear from God consistently through the Holy Spirit. And then number three, through prayer. And so now I, 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 out of those five areas, I'm just still teaching on number one of those five, and that's prayer. So yesterday, um, I told you I'm calling this series Progress on Purpose. And so we have to, if we want to make progress, it has to be intentional. And so I called this yesterday, leveling up your prayer life. This is leveling up your prayer life part two. And today I'm going to deal with how to pray. I'm going to deal with basically how to pray from a position of God's grace. And so get a little bit more tactical in understanding how we should pray. Uh, so I have um, three things to share with you on this morning. And as I go through these three things, this is now your opportunity to rid yourself of all distractions, kind of lock in, open up your heart to receive three things about prayer. Number one, here we go. All right. So living by faith, before I even get into the prayer thing, I had to talk about faith real quick, but living by faith and walking in new levels will require a certain level of discomfort. Let me explain. And so you got to be open to a certain level of discomfort if you want to experience new levels in Christ Jesus, to experience something new, to experience something you've never experienced before, right? Then um, you're going to have to do things that you've never done before. And doing things that you've never done before and opening up your heart to whatever God is doing that's new, it's uncomfortable because like we would be more comfortable just staying where we are. But God is calling, God is not, God will love you. God loves you right where you are, but he loves you too much to leave you right there. And so he's always calling you to the next thing. He's always calling you to something new. And so if you're hearing from God, yes, this is a season of new levels. If that's what you're decreeing and you're declaring new levels in 2021, then yeah, you have to be open to the new things that God is leading you into. And once you do and you open up your heart, then you start praying in accordance with that so that your, your prayers can be effective. Now, you cannot have an effective prayer life without hearing from heaven and then aligning your prayers with what you're hearing, right? So your prayers have to be in sync with or in alignment with heaven, which is what I'll be teaching on today. So for your prayers to be aligned with heaven, you must be open to whatever God wants to do in this season. And so uh, I remember my, my pastor, my spiritual father, Apostle Tony Brazelton, he, told, he tells the story of this one time where God wanted to give him something that was a significant thing for the ministry. And he was driving past it. And the Lord said, had you been open, I would have given you that building. 
Uh, and uh, and he said, well, I didn't even know I was closed. And so a lot of times we don't even know that we're cl we have closed our heart to the things of God. We have to remain open. If God is saying new levels, if God is saying there's, so there's something new that he wants you to experience in 2021, then you have to be open to hearing something new. Don't write it off when the thought comes in your, in your heart and don't just blow it off. You got to be positioned, locked in, spending time in prayer and ready for something new. And know that if God is saying it's new, then it's also going to be big, <laughs> right? And so uh, Pastor Cynthia at my church, she says, make it, do it big and make it count. And so if it's going to be new, it's also going to be big. So true faith requires a departure from the safety of human possibility. Let me say that again. True faith, as it relates to faith, it requires a departure from the safety of human possibility. If you are just going to live your life as a mere human, if you're going to live your life just based on what you can do, if you're just going to live your life based on your income, your salary, your paycheck, your intellect, your power, your human ability, your human strength, all the things that you can do, you're not relying on God, you're not seeking him, you're not receiving revelation from heaven, then don't even pray. I mean, because you don't need to pray, right? You're just a human. You're, you're living your life as a mere human. But God didn't call you to live as a mere human. You are not a mere man. If you are born again, you are walking around with God on the inside of you. You are not a mere man. You are born from above. You have supernatural power. You have insight, wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and understanding that's coming from heaven. And God is telling you how to live. And so now that you're getting insight and, and downloads from another world, now you're praying in accordance with that, in harmony with that. And God wants you to walk in a new level, a new season, a new stage. And so for you to walk in that, you have to receive from heaven, be open to it, and then pray, come in agreement with it. To live by faith, you got to be comfortable with a certain level of discomfort. God is not going to allow you to just rest on your laurels and rest in your ability and rest where you are. No, God will call you to people and places and things that are going, that are far exceeds your ability, your power, and your strength. God calls you into things and and into areas that force you to rely on him. So living by faith means that, Lord, I am open. And whatever you lead me to do, even though I, I, don't, I don't think I can do it, well, no. Then I realize I have to catch myself and say, well, I can't do it. In and of myself, I can't do it, but I can do all things through Christ. And because you are on me and in me and with me and for me, then I can do it. I'm not striving to obtain it. Jesus already obtained it for me. What I do by faith is receive and maintain what Jesus obtained. So in this season of new levels, before I start really teaching on prayer, I had to slide this in on faith. You have to build up your faith. God has declared that this is new levels and new levels will require new things. And so you got to keep your heart open. And when God is leading you to do something that's new, that's going to take you out of your comfort zone, you got to be okay with that. Say amen to that. All right, number two, I got a little excited on that first one. All right, so number two, your prayers must be in alignment and in agreement with heaven. And so this is really what I wanted to talk about today was praying from a position of God's grace. The Father wants us to pray, but let me be clear about something. Look at me for a minute. Do me a favor, lock in. The Father wants us to pray, but to be clear, God is not signed up to give you whatever you want. God, God is not a genie in a bottle, right? He has not signed up to give you whatever you desire, whatever your selfish desires are, whatever is birthed in your heart. No, God is signed up to give you everything that was birthed in his heart for you from the foundations of the world. So God's grace is a key aspect of what I'm talking about here. God has already given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. God, God will freely give you all things richly to enjoy that align up with his will. So while let me use the, the prayer of agreement as an example of this. So Jesus was teaching his disciples about the prayer of agreement. And in Matthew chapter 16 and Matthew chapter 18, basically, um, he was saying that we have the power to, to bind or prevent or to loose or permit things to happen on earth. And if you read it just from the traditional King James Version, you may get the wrong understanding if you don't, if you don't really understand the context. So let me read two verses for you from the King James Version, and then I'll explain it. So Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19, King James says, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Matthew 18 and 18, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, if you only read those verses without any context um, and you don't really understand what Jesus is saying, 
then it sounds like, it sounds like heaven will do whatever, whatever you say. <laughs> whatever you bind, heaven will bind. Whatever you loose, heaven will loose. That's kind of what it sounds like, but that's not what Jesus was saying at, at all. Let me explain. In Matthew 18 and 18, let me give it to you from the Amplified Bible, and then I, I'll kind of pull the string on it. So the Amplified says, truly I tell you, whatever you forbid and declare to be improper or unlawful on earth must be what is already forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit and declare to be proper and lawful on earth must be whatever is already permitted in heaven. See, this translation is giving us a little bit more light. Jesus was not putting the emphasis on heaven to back you up. No, Jesus was putting the emphasis on you to find out what heaven has already provided. <laughs> and so, no, so it wasn't like, hey, heaven is here to do whatever you want. Go, Johnny, go, Sally, go, Susan, go, Keisha, open up your mouth. Whatever you say, we will give it to you. No, that's not, I don't know what Bible you're reading. That's not the Bible at all, right? No, it's saying, no, there are things that are already stored up for, for Sarah and Susie and Keisha and John. There are things that are already stored up for you. All things that pertain to life and godliness are already yours. God already made plans. And so what heaven is saying is, I need you to find out what I'm giving you. I need you to find out what's already yours. And when you pray in accordance with what God already provided, now all of heaven is backing you up. Now you're praying. You can bind what's already bound. You can loose what's already loose. And so it's not like you're telling God what to do. That would be the tail wagging the dog. You don't get to command God. No, you're coming in agreement with God and alignment with God. You got it? Say amen to that. All right. Number three, last thing for this, the third point and last point for today. Uh, and then I'm going to keep teaching on this in, uh, tomorrow, but praying from a position of God's grace. So this is really what I wanted to get to. So when you pray, you must pray from a position of God's grace. So praying is not about you telling God what to do or watch this. And I shiver when people say this and I understand, you know, you could take the King James sometimes and, and, and maybe misconstrue it. You don't get to command God. <laughs> and so when people say, I command God, eh, I don't know. I mean, God is not your servant. To be clear, look at me. Let me be clear about something. God is not your servant. You are his, right? I mean, it's the other way around. So you're not telling him what to do. It's the other way around. God tells you what to do. Faith is about submission. Faith is about surrender. Faith is about understanding, receiving downloads from heaven concerning what's already yours, and then praying that, then pursuing that, then coming in agreement with that. You don't get to tell God what to do. God leads you, not the other way around. Say amen to that. See, when you understand that God already made plans for you before the world began, and he made those plans by grace, unearned, unmerited, undeserved, then you understand the importance of seeking God concerning God. Father, I want you to know what's already mine. Like, what is it that's already mine? And when God leads you to something now, it's going to be it's, it's exceedingly, abundantly above all you can ask or think or imagine, according to the power that works on the inside of you. When God reveals something to you that he planned for you to have, in most cases, you're going to be like, whoa, like I, could, I didn't see myself doing that. That's a whole nother level. That's what I'm talking about. New levels in 2021. In John, uh, John, 1 John 5, verses 14 and 15 from the easy to read version, explain this very clearly. This is what the Bible says. We can come to God with no doubts. This means that when we ask for things, and those things are in agreement with what God wants for us, then God cares about what we say. He listens to us every time we ask. So we know that God gives us whatever we ask for from him. So whatever we're asking for, that's in our, already in agreement with what he already provided, then of course we can have it. But if you're asking for something that's not in agreement, then James said it this way. He says, you're asking, but you don't receive because you're asking amiss that you may consume it upon your own lusts and desires. You're asking for something that was birthed in your heart and not in God's heart, and God never signed up to give you your desires. God never signed up to just, you said, wait a minute, Brother Pena, doesn't the Bible says God will give you the desires of your heart? Yeah, but let me explain. God will give you the desires of your heart, not the object of your desires. He gives you the desire. He gives you the desire for what to pray for. And then after he gives you the desire of what to pray for, and you pray for, a, for the desire that's a desire that came from him, that's an alignment with him, then God will give you the object of your desire because your desire is his desire. You got it? Matter of fact, this is not in my, my notes for this morning, but I'll just slide this in from John 15. 
in John 15, basically, Jesus was saying, you can actually get to the point where you can ask for whatever you want and God will give it to you. He said in John 15, he said, if you abide in me, like if you abide in me, like I'm in God and God is in me and my words abide in you, then you can actually get to the point where you can ask for whatever you want. Because at that point, when you abide in me, my words abide in you, then whatever you want is what I want. Because you, at that point, your will is God's will. If you ever get to the point where all you want, all I want, Father, is what you want for me. I don't want nothing else. I literally, Rick Pena wants nothing else. If you get to the point where all you want is what God wants, then and your desires are his desires, at that point, Jesus is like, ask for whatever you want. You know why? Because you've already been transformed. Your mind has been renewed. Everything you want is what I want. And at that point, you can ask for whatever you want. You got it? So praying from a position of grace means you're praying from God's perspective. You, you're praying not from a, a world's point of view or earth's point of view. You're praying on earth from a position of what heaven has already provided. And living this way, this is how you get to experience heaven on earth. This is how God's will is going to be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when you understand this, this dynamic... Uh, you also understand the, the responsibility that you have. So God has given you responsibility in the earth domain to bind and to lose. So listen, let me say something. Look at me. Please don't send your kids out there. Don't send your children without praying. Don't, don't release your kids to go to school. Without, you have a, God has given you the responsibility. You have a right, but there's also a responsibility to bind and to lose. You can permit and prevent. You got to do it. I mean, like, don't think that just because you have the thought, just because, oh, God knows my heart that you don't need to open up your mouth. No, you have to open up your mouth and pray. That's what the Bible teaches. Look, Jesus said, you already, I, we dealt with this yesterday. God already knows what you need, but he still expects you to pray. He has, he requires you to pray. So when something is happening in your life that maybe you don't like, you need to pause for a moment and say, wait a minute, have I prayed about this? Have I gotten God involved? Am I just assuming that God is going to do it because I have a good thought in my heart? Or have I literally prayed about it? You have to open up your heart and pray. You have a responsibility to pray. If you want to level up your prayer life in 2021, I mean, if you want to level up your life in 2021, you're going to have to level up your prayer life. That's enough for today. I could, I could keep going, but I'm just going to stop. Uh, I'll keep flowing in this vein tomorrow, but I've definitely given you enough for today. Understanding prayer is critical. You have to understand how to pray, praying in, accord, in accordance with or in alignment with heaven, with God's will. So let's open up our mouths now and speak something over our lives. I, I want you to say this out, out loud. Say, Father, I thank you for extending your amazing grace towards me. I also thank you for teaching me to pray from a position of grace. Now, there was a time in my life when I prayed from a position of need, <laughs> I thought of all the things that I needed and I asked you to give them to me. There were times in my life where my prayers simply consisted of a list of everything I, you, I wanted you to give me. Now, those prayers were ineffective because they were not aligned with heaven. I was looking at my life from a world's point of view. But now you put your spirit in me and I see things from heaven's point of view. So I now pray from a position of grace. I pray from the position of what's already provided. And as I do, I come in agreement with heaven and I bring the reality of heaven into this world. In my life, I experience heaven on earth in this season of new levels I level up my commitment to prayer and I boldly declare that greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Don't you want my notes? Like these are good notes, man. I'm giving you this stuff for free. So go to todaysword.org, click on the subscribe button. And you're going to get an email with all my notes and you'll get my notes for free, right? So sign up and get the messages. Do me a favor. If these messages have been a blessing to you or this message, leave me some comments in the chat. I go back. There's a lot of stuff going on in the chat. I'm going to go back and, and, and read them and I'll, I'll, I'll respond. So leave me some comments in the chat. Uh, and then also share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline and with your friends. 
Look, tomorrow I'm going to keep teaching on this. <laughs> and remember, this is one of five. I'm still on the first point of five points because I want to teach in January how to lay the foundation for us to level up in 2021. I love you and God loves you more. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you.